Here's example five with evaluating inverse trig functions. So this here is going to be the inverse secant function. So uh, it might sound like it's gonna be a little more complicated. It might look a little more complicated too with these numbers, but it really won't be that bad. Uh, we can actually just relate it back to the cosine function eventually, and uh, everything will be a little bit easier. We can just look at the unit circle again. So before we move on, just like in the first four examples, we want to remember what's the range of the inverse secant function so that we can be sure that we get um, a correct number. So remember the range, the way we defined it was uh, 0 to pi over 2, like this, and then union pi over 2 uh, all the way up to pi. So basically everything between 0 and pi, including 0 and pi, and uh, except for pi over 2. Okay. So this is the range of the inverse secant function. So whatever numbers we get here when we evaluate, uh, those numbers better be inside of this range or else something went wrong. Okay. Now we approach this just like we did before, ask ourselves the exact same question, uh, which theta in the range of the inverse trig function that we're looking at, which theta inside of the range of the inverse trig function we're looking at has a secant of theta equal to 1. Okay, so we want uh, the inverse secant of 1. So we ask ourselves, okay, what number inside of this range has a secant equal to 1? Okay, well, secant's kind of goofy, right? So we don't really uh, think about secant much. So we eventually want to go back to the unit circle. So what we can do is think of this in terms of cosine. So remember, uh, secant is 1 over cosine, right? So this is a 1 over cosine of theta equals 1. Okay, so that's still 1. So then uh, if we multiply both sides by cosine of theta, um, then we end up with this. So 1 equals cosine of theta. Okay. Or a short way to think about this is uh, take the reciprocal of both sides. Just take the reciprocal of both sides, then we get cosine of theta equals 1. So the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Uh, the reciprocal of secant of theta is cosine of theta. So that's a quick way of thinking about it. So let's, well, we're going to do that from now on. Um, so let's uh, just write it like that. So secant of theta is 1. We can't think about it like that. That's fine. But secant, we don't really think about secant uh, on the unit circle. Cosine is more common. So again, take the reciprocal of both sides as a shortcut. Then we end up with cosine of theta equals 1. Okay. So now this is a little easier. So now we can ask ourselves, okay, which theta inside of this uh, crazy goofy union of intervals here has cosine of theta equal to 1? Okay. It's the exact same question as the secant of theta is 1, cosine of theta is 1. It's asking ourselves the exact same question. Okay. And the answer is, we'll go back, take a look at the unit circle, and we see that cosine of 0 is 1. And that's our answer, 0, because 0 is inside of the interval that we want, and 0 has cosine equal to 1, which also means that secant of 0 is 1. Okay. Now, if you remember that the secant of 0 is 1, then you don't have to go through this step with the cosine. That's totally fine. You can just skip that. But if you need to go through that step, that's totally fine. Not a bad uh, way to go. Just, uh, just remember that secant to cosine, they're reciprocals. Remember this reciprocal shortcut. Um, anyway, so which theta inside of this goofy interval has secant to theta equal to 1? Well, secant to theta equals 1 means cosine to theta is 1. And we know that cosine of 0 is 1, and 0 is inside of this interval. So that's the answer to part A, zero, okay? Okay, now, uh, let's do part B. Okay, so now we uh, ask ourselves the exact same question, but with a different number now. So uh, which theta inside of this crazy goofy interval, inside of the range, of the inverse secant function, which theta in the range of the inverse secant function has secant of theta equal to negative 2 root 3 over 3? Question mark. Okay. So now uh, we can do the same thing we did before, and it's going to be a little more clear what's happening. So uh, we can write it out all the details like we did before, or let's just do the reciprocal shortcut. Take the reciprocal of both sides. Reciprocal of secant of theta is cosine of theta. Reciprocal of this is going to be negative 3 over 2 root 3. Well, that's kind of goofy, right? What's that? That uh, doesn't look like anything we know, but what we can do is um, rationalize the denominator, uh, which, by the way, we wouldn't have to do if this denominator up here wasn't already rationalized. So 
by rationalizing this denominator, the in the problem we were given, it's already more kind of more complicated than it really needed to be. But it is what it is. So anyway, uh, rationalize the denominator here. So multiply the top and the bottom by root 3. So then what happens is we get uh, negative 3 root 3 over what's on the bottom. Well, 2 root 3 times root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. So this is 2 times 3. Okay. So the 3's cancel. And we end up with uh, negative root 3 over 2. Okay, and the cosine of theta is still there. Okay, so what are we really asking ourselves? What we're really asking ourselves is which theta inside of this interval, inside of the range of the inverse secant function, uh, has cosine of theta equal to negative root 3 over 2? And that's much uh, easier to determine on the unit circle. Okay, so secant of theta um, being negative 2 over 3 over 3, we can't really look at the unit circle and be like, aha, it's, it's that theta right there. Unless you know the unit circle just crazy well inside out, backwards, forwards, all that which is good, but um, as long as you know another way to get there, that's fine too. So just remember, uh, convert into cosines like that, and then, okay, cosine of theta is negative root 3 over 2. Well, that's a nice value on the unit circle. I know that uh, if cosine of theta is negative root 3 over 2, then theta is going to be 5 pi over 6. Okay, Because in other words, uh, cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. Okay, so that's it. That's our answer. 5 pi over 6 is uh, the answer to the original problem here for part B. Okay, so the inverse secant of negative 2 root 3 over 3 is 5 pi over 6 because cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2, which means secant of 5 pi over 6 is negative 2 root 3 over 3. And also, uh, 5 pi over 6 is inside of this interval here. Okay? So we're good, that's great, that's wonderful, that's part B. Um, how about inverse secant of 2? Well, we're just going to ask ourselves the same question. Inverse secant of 2. Uh, okay, so which theta inside of this interval, inside of the range of the inverse secant function, has secant of theta equal to 2? Let's proceed just like we did before. Um, okay, so secant of theta equals 2. Let's take the reciprocal, and we're going to get cosine of theta equals 1 half. Okay, so if cosine of theta is 1 half, then now basically we're asking ourselves the question, which theta inside of this range of inverse secant function has cosine of theta equal to 1 half? And that's uh, a little easier to determine on the unit circle than secant of theta equals 2 is. So if we look at a unit circle, we see, okay, cosine of theta is 1 half. Remember, a cosine is the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle, and we see that the theta that makes that true inside of this crazy unit of intervals here is uh, pi over 3. So cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, and that's it. That's our answer for part C. Inverse secant of 2 is pi over 3, because first of all, Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, which means secant of pi over 3 is 2. And second of all, pi over 3 is inside of this interval. So we're good to go. Okay. Again, there are actually infinitely many numbers whose inverse secant is 2, but there's only one such number inside of this interval whose inverse secant is 2, and that number is pi over 3. Okay. Now part D, what about the inverse secant of 1 over 4? Okay. So we want to be a little careful here. If you've been watching the other examples, you probably know what's coming. But um, there's a few different ways to think about it. So which theta inside of this crazy interval has secant of theta equal to 1 fourth? Well, we can do it just like we've been doing. There's actually three different ways to think about this one. We can do it just like we've been doing. We can say, okay, take reciprocals. Cosine of theta is 4. Uh, that's never going to happen, because remember, uh, negative 1 is less than or equal to cosine of theta, is less than or equal to 1 no matter what theta is. Any theta you plug in here, you're always going to have this be true. So 4 is too big. Cosine of theta can never be 4. So um, that means secant of theta can never be 1 fourth, which means this does not exist. There's no solution. That's all there is to it. Okay. That's one way of thinking about it. Another way of thinking about it is before we even go into cosines, we can look at this and say, OK, I want a theta such that secant of theta is 1 fourth. Well, hey, that's outside of the range of the secant function. What's the range of the secant function? 
the range of the secant function is negative infinity to negative 1 union 1 to infinity, right? 1 fourth is not in this range. 1 fourth is between negative 1 and 1. So 1 fourth is not in the range of secant. So that's another way to think about it. And we can just say, no, it does not exist, no solution. A third way to think about it is actually pretty much the same as the second way. Uh, since this is the range of the secant function, it's also the domain of the inverse secant function. So if we remember this is the domain of the inverse secant function, that's probably the best way to remember so that we can just skip all this stuff here. We don't even have to go that far. We can just look at this and say, I want the inverse secant of 1 fourth. Well, hey, 1 fourth, that's not in the domain of the inverse secant function. Since this number is not in the domain of the inverse secant function, I can't even do that. So it does not exist, no solution. Uh, the DNE, uh, that's all there is to it. So that's part D, um, for example, five of evaluating inverse trig functions. And this has been the inverse secant function.